Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you'll be rewarded for knowing the obscure rather than the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Natasha, and this is Alan, and we're from London. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Jade, this is my husband Dom, and we're from Chorley in Lancashire. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Julie, this is my daughter Abigail, and we're from Pool. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Emma, this is my husband Simon, and we're from St Neots in Cambridgeshire. And these are today's contestants. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. Warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, welcome to Pointless. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce, as reassuring as a warm blanket, a hot chocolate, and a new battery in the smoke detector. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Uh, lovely to have you here. Dom has come back, knocked out last time, got a pointless answer. Yeah. So that's quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it is impressive. Uh, round one today, uh, I think you're going to be good at. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I always like those <laughs> so, rounds. It's about time, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good stuff. Now, Tracy and Lorna didn't win the jackpot last time, which means we're adding another £1,000 to it. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> remember, the pair with a higher score at the end of each round gets eliminated. That's the only thing you have to remember. Other than that, just enjoy yourselves. Uh, have a wonderful time. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... The Royal Family. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Yes, who's going to go second? <laughs> and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..people in the line of succession to the UK throne. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you 16 pictures now of people who are in the line to succession to the UK throne. Can you recognise any of these people, please? And that's at the end of September 2020. Aren't we all sort of in yeah. line, in a way? We all are, yeah. But I assume that there's a specific list and it only goes I down suppose. so far. I imagine it must. They can't be. rank Beyond all of that. us. They can't. Wouldn't be too long before we stumbled upon your name. I suspect. Oh, it'd be quite a long Oh, a while, yeah. Quite but long. in terms but... of, you know, you'd be in the first million. Do you think? What, of 70 million people? Yeah, I think so. Don't you think? Yeah, I don't and know. And then, it'd be, uh, then it'd be the rest of us just kind of struggling to get... I wonder who'd be know. last. Do you know what, actually? I bet about half people, I think, in this room would be uh, ahead of me, probably. <laughs> um, now, OK, we're going to show you an image. That's going to stay up for the whole round. That doesn't change halfway through. Um, it'll stay up there. OK, let's see who is on that board. There they are. Just give you a little bit of time to absorb that. Natasha, can you see? <laughs> yeah, I can. OK, now, Natasha, welcome back. Hi. Good to have you with us. You very nearly uh, stormed off with, the, uh, with your trophy after just one appearance last that time. That was the goal, to come on here and get a pointless trophy. So the goal continues. In it continues. Round. You get three shots. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Remind us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a fashion model from London, and I also work in marketing and social media. Is that something that's kind of that part of the course that comes with the territory if, you are a, if you're a fashion model? No, you're... it's just uh, modelling stops at some point, so I'm trying to move on to something else. And I'm also studying uh, coding, so I'm doing coding as well. I mean, I, it's so <laughs> exciting, I don't even know what it means. There we are. <laughs> uh, Natasha, what are you going to go for on our board here? Oh, I'm so bad with putting names to faces. So, well, I do know a few, but it's, it's really obvious ones. But I'm, I'm going to go with uh, George, little, little George. Prince George. OK, you will go with Prince think, George. I think that's George. Let us see if Prince George <laughs> is up there. Prince George. Prince George is indeed up there. And that goes down to 48. Not bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's third in line to the throne. Great grandchild of the Queen. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Dom, welcome back. Good to have you with us again. Remind us all about yourself, Dom. Um, I work in the free publication distribution sector. Father to three boys, which obviously keeps me very busy. Indeed. Like to play a bit of golf. Walk in the hills with a baby strapped to my back. Which which hills do you like? Do you like West Pennines? The West Pennines. They're pretty West. much on the doorstep. With the baby, you have one of those baby rucksacks. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay, now Dom, what are you going to go for on our board here? I think I'll go for the Duke of Kent. 
You're going to go for the Duke of Kent. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Duke of Kent. Bad luck, Dom. I'm afraid not for the Duke of Kent. That scores you 100 points. Yeah, I'll give all the correct answers at the end of the pass. Sorry, Dom. Thank you very much indeed. Julie. Hello. Tell us all about yourself, Julie. Lovely to have you here. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm uh, from Paul in Dorset. Lovely. Uh, I just recently moved back there. Where had you been before? All over. My husband was in the army, so I we've been moving around. So I now see. And now finally own... back home. Yes. And is that final? Is that it? You're oh, now yes. there. Never moving again. No more again. postings. <laughs> no. 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 That's oh. it. Yeah. Right, um, Julie. What are you going to go for on our board of royals? Oh, I, I, some of them I know quite obvious. I think I'm I think the sort of older guy on the right hand side. I think is Richard, Duke of Gloucester. Duke of Gloucester says yeah. Julie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Duke of Gloucester. It is <laughs> Gloucester. 100 is our high score, 48 is our low, and you pass them both. That was a pointless answer. <laughs> there we are. Very well done indeed. Richard, Duke of Gloucester, absolutely right. That adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £3,750 and scores you nothing. Very, very well done indeed. Thank you. What a start to your pointless career. Terrific stuff, yeah. <laughs> he just looks like a guy you'd see in the pub. <laughs> yeah. Right? It doesn't look... You wouldn't know. He's 27th in line to the throne. Mm. His uh, actual name is Prince Richard Alexander. That's nice. That's pretty good, isn't it? That is So, nice. in a way, we're 27th in line to the throne. There we are. Good. If we you, are Richard yeah, Alexander. That's, that's very nice. nice. Combined. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Simon. Hello. Welcome to Pointless from St Neots. Yeah. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm a CAD technician at a civil engineering company, um, and also I like for most of my spare time going climbing, rock climbing. What's the scariest thing you've climbed? One of the scariest is probably in Spain. We climbed, um, it's called the Peñón de Ifac. Um, it's in Calpe. Um, that's probably a good couple of hundred metres high. Yeah. And you, two of you go up there taking it in turns to go first, um, <sighs> which is quite scary going from... Yeah. Well, you're, you're just hanging on by a couple of bolts yeah. that someone else has put in there and you're hoping they're going to be OK and <laughs> so, hoping yeah. you don't fall off. Oh. <laughs> um, what are you going to go for, Simon? Um, I'm going to go for Zara Phillips. Zara Phillips. So, Simon, let's see how many of our 100 people said Zara Phillips. Zara Phillips is right. Well, 100 our high score, zero our low score. So, there we are. Taylor. 30 Taylor. is where you end up with Zara Phillips. <laughs> yeah, 18th in line to the throne. Zara Tyndall now, of course, and uh, her two children, Mia and Lena, are 19th and 20th in line to the throne. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Julie, hats off to you. Very well Thank done you. indeed. <laughs> Best score of the pass. Uh, then we travel up from there to 30, which is where we find Simon and Emma, then up to 48, where we find Natasha and Alan, then up to 100, where we find Dom and Jade. Oh, Dom, I'm so sorry. We had a pointless answer from you last time. Um, <laughs> I mean, my goodness, how the tables have turned. <laughs> uh, it's all in your hands, Jade. Good luck with that. We're going to come you. back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Emma, welcome to Pointless. Hi. Lovely to have you here. Tell yes, us all about you. yourself. Uh, I'm uh, currently on extended maternity leave, but uh, before that, in my pre-mother life, uh, I was a chief instructor at an outdoor activity centre. This is where you and Simon met, <laughs> it? Is was it? where we met, absolutely, yes. So, do you also climb? Uh, yes, I prefer to be on the water, so I prefer to sail or windsurf or Perfect. kayak. Will you be going back to the outdoor activity centre? I will, yes. Yeah, ah. and, and our son has already done lots of uh, activities on the water already. Excellent. Now, Emma, yep. you're on 30. 69 or less keeps you in the game. Right. Uh, well, I think I will go then for Princess Charlotte, please. Princess Charlotte. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get close to that or even below it with Princess Charlotte. Princess Charlotte is right and you are through. Very well done indeed. Down, that goes to 42, takes her up to 72. Very well, both fourth in line to the throne, uh, and, of course, since 2013, she now cannot be overtaken. In the olden days, a, a younger son would have uh, taken precedence. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Abby, welcome to Pointless. Thanks. Uh, tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm a student at Cardiff University, currently studying psychology. Um, what year are you in? Uh, my third year, I'm on placement. 
I see. Where's your placement? Uh, in Bath. I'm at the Centre for Pain Research at the university there. Oh, pain research. In France, that's a bread yeah. factory. <laughs> well, bread, bread research. Yeah, anyway, it sounds like an interesting Doesn't it? place. It does sound like an interesting <laughs> place. Now, listen, you, thanks to Julie's amazing work in the first pass, I mean, you, you have to score 99 or less. OK, that's great, because I only know the really obvious ones. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Prince Harry. You're going to go with Prince Harry? Yeah. OK, there is Prince Harry. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex. Indeed. There is your red line. It's right and you're through. 87 is what it scores. Takes your total up to 87. Yeah, Mum doing a lot of heavy lifting there. Probably, <laughs> probably not for the first time. Uh, yeah, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, there is sixth in line to the throne. So I suspect we won't uh, get down as far as him. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And we come to you, Jade. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, remind us all about yourself, Jade. I'm an office manager for an accountancy practice, but I'm currently on maternity leave. Excellent. Very good. Are you, are you part of these walks as well with the, with the baby guy? Yes. yes. I carry the lead of the pooch. The lead of the pooch. Yes. Excellent. Good <laughs> stuff. Now, Jade, you are the high scorers at the moment. Mm -hmm. So what we require from you is a very, very low score. Again, I only know the obvious answers. So I shall hazard a guess that one of those faces belongs to the Duke of York. You're going to say the Duke of York? OK, no red line views. You're the high scorers. How many of our 100 people said the Duke of York? Is it right? Duke of York, not on that board, I'm afraid. That's nice. You matched Dom's score. Uh, 100 <laughs> points taking you up to 200. Alan, welcome back to Pointless. Good to have you with us once again. Remind us all about yourself, Alan. I'm, I'm retired now, but uh, I'm Natasha's stepfather. Um, I used to be a computer programmer working in the city. Now I'm financial services. And uh, what fills your time these days, Alan? Well, I've introduced Natasha here to the, uh, to the wonders of astronomy, so we, uh, we spend some time doing that. Although, since we both live in London, it's, uh, it's, not it's, a, bit, it's a bit of a challenge. But it's a bit of a challenge. So Have a you got very high-powered telescopes? Well, no, it's not really worth it for London, but we've both got uh, binoculars. Spying on the neighbours, mainly. <laughs> well, that's right. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's fun, though. Well, you can see with binoculars on, uh, in London. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, the best, it's the best beginner's tool because it's relatively cheap. Alan, you're through, by the way. It doesn't matter what you score, you're still through, which is good. Do you feel like talking well, us through that board? Well, that's actually weight off my mind because <laughs> uh, I know who the first names are some of the obscure people on there. I think the, lady, the blonde lady on the second row is called Helen. And I think the third row is uh, Sarah. But I think I'll go for Prince Edward. You're going to go for Prince Edward? Let us see if that is right. No red lines, you're already through. How many people said it? It's right. Down that goes to 36, taking your total up to 84. Well played, Alan. Yeah, 11th in line to the throne. He's slipped down over the years, hasn't he? He has, yes. Didn't used to be 11th, did he? No. Oh, in the, in the old days. No. Now, how are you on this board? I think I'm pretty good. Excellent. Shall we start top left? Princess Royal. Princess right? Royal would yeah. have scored you 67. Prince Michael of Kent. Prince Michael of Kent, yeah, not the Duke of Kent. Prince Michael of Kent. Yeah, you won't be the only one who yeah. made that mistake. Would have scored um, you 7. Princess Beatrice. It is Princess Beatrice, yeah. Yes. 36 points. Next row down. That's the Duke of Cambridge. It is, yeah. Prince William, Duke of Cambridge. Would have scored you 88. That is Lady Helen Taylor. Yeah, she's, Helen, she's absolutely right. Great. Lady Helen Taylor. She would have scored you two. Next row down, next to the Earl of Wessex. That is... She's Helen Taylor's niece. Amelia Windsor, she's called. Yes, Lady Amelia Windsor. Well done. That's a one-pointer. Next to her. That is uh, Sarah Erstwhile Armstrong-Jones, but she's Chateau. Sarah, Sarah Chateau. Chateau. There is uh, Sarah. You're quite right about that as well. Alan, three points for Lady Sarah Chateau, then... Peter Phillips. Peter Phillips would have scored you nine. She is the daughter of the Wessexes. I think she's called Louise. Lady Louise, Louise Windsor. Windsor. Well done. This is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, and, she would have scored you three. Um, David Snowden, as he now is. Earl of Snowden, yeah. Would have scored you four points. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, thank you very much indeed. So, at the end of our first round, the pair who are heading home with their high score of 200, I'm afraid, Jade and Dom, it is you. This is where we say goodbye to you. 
Oh, I'm sorry. And you've been so good. We've what had a way to go, though. I know. 200. Well, of glory. And, and nobody can get blamed. We've got a long drive yeah. home. Oh, it's yeah, perfect. <laughs> it's great. Perfect. No recriminations at all. Well, thank you so much for playing, Jaden Dom. Lovely to have thank you. you. Jaden Dom. You. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it through round one. Particular congratulations to you, Julie. Thanks. Lovely, low, pointless answer there. And uh, Emma and Simon, you were our lowest scoring team, so uh, fantastic work there. And uh, you did perfectly well on the first podium as well. <laughs> um, great to have you here. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Words. One of those rounds. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns answers containing the letters I, N and G that do not end ing. I hope that's clear. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, on each board, simply six clues to answers, all of which contain the letters I, N and G somewhere in them, uh, but they don't end ing. That's interesting. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. Yeah. Here's the board of clues, six of them. Food produced without the use of artificial fertilisers or pesticides. Oh, Italian chef who won I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here in 2009, GD. Waterfalls on the border of Ontario and New York State, N. First of Veronica Roth's novels featuring heroine Beatrice Pryor, D. Period of time a monarch rules their country, R. And the 1956 award-winning film starring Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean, G. There we are. Over to you, Natasha. Oh, well, I, I know a couple, but the question is which one is going to be pointless. OK, so I'm, I'm just going to go with organic, the first one. Organic. organic. Let's see how many of our 100 people said organic. Organic is right. Look at that. Down it goes to 30. Not bad at all. Solid start to the round. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite a lowish score that is, and I think perhaps our hundred. If it, as soon as you do a category that sounds complicated, yeah, they freak out. Yeah. Whereas if you just said to them, "What's the answer to that?" Oh, <laughs> they'd know it. They'd say organic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So true. Now, Abby, what are you going to go for? Um, I know a couple, uh, but again, it's just figuring out which one is lower. So I think I'll go with the first of Veronica Roth's novels is Divergent. Divergent for the Veronica Roth. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Divergent. Divergent is right. Down it goes to two. Look at it. Absolutely unstoppable. Two. Well done. Uh, well done. Repaying the favour to your mum there. Lovely answer. Yeah, uh, they're set in a, a sort of future dystopian Chicago, those, uh, that, that selection of novels. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Emma. Hello. What are you going to go for on this board? You can talk through that whole board, if you like, and fill um, in our blanks. Well, I wish I knew the bottom one. <laughs> it's the only one I don't know. Um, I think the period of uh, time a monarch rules their country is rain. Um, the waterfalls, Niagara, and I th I'm hoping the Italian chef is Gino De Campo. I've not seen it, but I think I will go for Gino De Campo, please. Gino De Campo says Emma. Yeah. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with Emma. <sighs> Gino De Campo is absolutely right. 30 is the high score, two is the low. You pass the high, and there you are on 13. Not bad. Very well played. Best answer of the ones you knew as well there. <laughs> Hosts family fortunes now, Gino De Campo. Does he? he does, does, yeah. Now, let's fit in the rest of these. Um, you're absolutely right about Niagara. Niagara would have scored you 42 points. You're right about Rain as well, which would have scored you 32. Do you know the James Dean Liz Taylor film? I mean, he only made a handful. Yeah. Um, I d no, I don't. Giant, just giant is play. the answer. Okay. Well, I don't know if you said that at home, 15 points, but the best answer up there is Divergent. Very well played. Thank you very much, Richard. We're halfway through the round. Well, Abby, very well done indeed. That puts you and Julie at the top of the tree. Then 13 is where we find Emma and Simon. 30 is where we find Natasha and Alan. Alan, good luck with the next board. Let's hope there's a nice giant-sized answer for you there, if you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now with the second players. Please step up to the podium. 
OK, let's put six more clues up on the board. All the answers to these clues contain letters I, N and G, but don't end in. Here we go. We've got... London Borough that is home to the Royal Observatory. G, domesticated rodent, scientifically known as Cavia porcellus. GP, capital city of Scotland. E, love duet sung by the characters Tony and Maria in musical West Side Story. T, electrical key operated system that starts car engines. I, and star of 1970s US TV crime series, policewoman, A, D. There we are, Simon. <laughs> There's a few I know, but I don't think any of them are going to be particularly low. I'm going to go with ignition for the electrical key operated system. Ignition for the key operated system. Here is your red line. Let's see what happens when we say ignition. Oh, not bad. Down to 30, with ignition takes your total up to 43. Yeah, a 1912 Cadillac was the first ever car with an electric starter, and that's because the founder of Cadillac's friend injured himself with one of the crank starters. 1912? That's earlier yeah. than I'd have thought. Yeah, fair play. Yeah. Fair play. Julie, 43 is the high score, so 40 gets you into the next round. I know a few. Uh, probably the least obvious is, uh, if it's correct, is guinea pig, second one down. You're going to say guinea pig for yeah. the caviar porcellus. Let us see if guinea pig is right. Here's your red line. Guinea pig is absolutely right. And you go down to 23, take your total up to 25. Very well done indeed. Very nicely done. No one really knows why they're called guinea pigs, because they have nothing to do with any of the, the Guinea countries, Papua New Guinea or Guinea or Guinea-Bissau. And so no one's, they think maybe it comes from Guyana, but even that they're not sure about. So no one quite oh, knows. Oh, really? I always imagined they were little pigs you could buy for a guinea. But guinea's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of, yeah. it's, that's maybe quite a lot of money, that. a guinea, though. Maybe I'll ring the uh, Oxford English Dictionary yeah, and suggest that. that. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Alan, we have a match on our hands here because you absolutely have to score 12 or less. Do you want to talk us through that board? What I'd like to go for is a bottom one. But I can't remember the woman's name, apart from the fact <laughs> that first name was Angie. So what I'll have to go for is, uh, is the love duet, which is uh, Tonight. Tonight says... Alan, OK, well, here is your red line. Let's see. Tonight, you might be in with a shout there. Can it get below that red line? It is tonight. You've done it! Oh, down oh. it goes to five. Very well done indeed, Alan. <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. Takes your total up to 35. Well done. <laughs> Very well played, Alan. Uh, two answers that would have seen you through. That was one of them. The other one was the bottom answer. It is Angie. It's Angie Dickinson. Would have scored seven points. Um, the London Borough is Greenwich. Greenwich uh, would have scored you twenty-eight. Now this is a this is an object lesson in that thing of sometimes people get confused when you make a question quite complicated. So yeah. if you ask people the capital city of Scotland, and it begins with E, and you know it's got I N G in the name, a hundred, you would you think would have thought probably you would have thought. Yeah, let's take a look at the score. Thirty-nine. What? for Edinburgh. Whoa! Sometimes it's simpler than it looks. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we've got to say goodbye to another pair. Simon and Emma, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yours, they were just very high-scoring answers. Nothing wrong with them. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, we say goodbye to you, but we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it very yeah. much. Simon and Emma, thank you so much. Thank you. For the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Julian, Abby, Natasha and Alan. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £3,750. But before we play for that, shall we just see if we can't boost it a bit by finding a couple of pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many ballet dancers as they could. Richard. <laughs> yeah, so on the board there's going to be six names. Two of them will be ballet dancers people have heard of, two will be ballet dancers people haven't heard of, and two will be ones we've made up. £250 if you can get one of the pointless answers. We haven't had a double pointless in this round for a very long time, yeah, have we? For ages. Yeah, for ages. It's been a long time. This could be the day. Yeah, yeah it feels it like it. 
Yeah. yeah. OK, so we are looking for the pointless ballet dancers on this list, and here they are. We've got... Moira Shearer, John Keeble, Carlos Acosta, Robert Helpman, Mikhail Baryshnikov and Catherine Hullabird. There we are. <laughs> Feel free to talk to pool your information. Yes. Show it more a share, definitely. More share? Yes. Carlos uh, Robert Costa. Hultman, he was in Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. Oh, is he not? Yes, he is. He is, he is, he is, he is, he is a ballet dancer. Okay. Yeah. The last uh, one, I feel the name, the surname isn't Catherine quite right. Hullabird. I don't, I don't recognise the son. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you stand the wrong? I want to go for Robert Hultman. Robert Hultman? Robert Hultman. OK, Robert shall Hultman. we do? Robert Hultman. Let's see. Is Robert Hultman a pointless ballet dancer? Robert Helpman is a ballet dancer. That's the first thing he has to be. The second thing... Oh, down to one! <laughs> Bad luck. Um, now, Natasha and Alan, who are you going to go for? Moira or Carlos? Uh, Moira Since, since Carlos. we seem to be going for a Powell and Pressburger theme here, we're we'll going for Moira Shearer. You're going to go for Moira Shearer? OK, well, let's see if Moira Shearer is a pointless answer. Moira Shearer is right. Oh, it's a pointless hey! answer. Very, very well done indeed. <laughs> I think the problem was you know your ballet dancers quite well, I think. So, it seems so. knowing <laughs> distinguishing between the a very obscure and the pointless. I think, well, was that's, ex that's exactly it. I would have thought that Robert Helpman would have been uh, um, a, a pointless answer, but there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the two incorrect answers first. And they are John Keeble who was the drummer in Spandau Ballet, and Catherine Hollibird, who writes the Angelina Ballerina books. So they were both incorrect. That's why I remember the name. Now, are these... <laughs> well, listen, at home, if you said Moira Shearer and one of these, you could have got two pointless answers. The other pointless answer is... Carlos Mikhail Baryshnikov. Oh. Yeah, Carlos Acosta scored two points. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that seems that seems surprising to me. Slightly, yeah. Baryshnikov wouldn't have scored points on Robert Helpman, but we always say, don't go for ones you've heard of, but uh, there, there it is. Bit of money. Bit of bit money, of money. yes, exactly. Well, there we are. Well done, you managed to find one point to answer, which means you've added £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £4,000. <laughs> but who'll be paying for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You're now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Here comes your first question. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question is all about pink animals. Richard. Yep, uh, five pictures now of pink animals, but what are the animals, please? We're going to give you alternate letters of their names as well. Very good indeed, thank you. Um, who, what are these animals of pink? And we have got A, P, G, Y, S, A, O, S. B, E, E, H, N, H W M T C <laughs> P G Hmm. Hmm. Very coy looking. D F A I G and E N D B A C. There we are. Now then, Julie and Abby, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Um, either A or B. Um, okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know E. You know yeah, e. I don't know E. Let's go for um, B. You say B. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to go for B. Elephant hawk moth. Elephant hawk moth. Say Julie and Abby. Now then, Natasha and Alan, do you want to talk us through that board? I think C might be a pig. <laughs> We're going to... Extend. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh pig. I'm not yeah. sure, but uh, then flamingo and then uh, pig, pygmy seahorse, I think we might go for. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, pygmy seahorse. I don't know the last one, so... Uh, pygmy seahorse sea for A. So, we have elephant hawk moth and we have pygmy seahorse. Um, elephant hawk moth, say Julian Abbey. Let's see if that's right and how many people said it. That goes down to 12. 12 for the elephant hawk moth. Let's see how far down the pygmy seahorse can take us for A. How many of our 100 said that? 
Make me see horses, right? Uh, oh, stops on 21. Very well done indeed, Julian Abbey. After one question, you're up one nil. Two good answers there. At the C, um, you're quite right, it's pig. Well done. Um, what do you think that scored? You've got to imagine 95. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. Flamingo doesn't score that much less than pig, actually. It scored in 93. And the last one, do you know this one? Uh, it's a sea I mean, slug. The thing is, once you've seen Nude Beach, um, yes. and I know there's one extra letter there, but still, um, Nude Beach. It's not a million miles away from Nude Beach. It's Nudibrank. Ah. Nudibrank. Nudibrank. Uh, would have scored you three points. Very well done if you said that. There we go. Um, thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now here comes your second question. Natasha and Alan, you have to win this one to stay in the game, but you get to answer it first, so it's slightly weighted in your favour. Our second question today is all about... Holidays and festivals in French. Richard. Yep, I'm going to show you five of those things. They're all going to be in French. We need you to give us the English equivalent, please. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal the five holidays and festivals in French. And we have... Noël, Pâques, Le Carême, La Saint-Valentin and Poisson d'Avril. There we are. Poisson d'Avril must be... Good for it. Uh, we're going to go with Pax, which is, uh, we think, Easter. Easter. Pack Easter. Now, Julian Abbey, talk us through that board. Uh, <laughs> uh, Christmas is the first one. Um, Pack was the kind of the one I was banking on. <laughs> Valentine's Day is obviously the fourth one. Uh, and maybe April Fool's for the last one. I don't know the middle one. We might go for April Fool's. OK, Poisson d'Avril. April Fool's. So we have Easter and April Fool's. Easter is what Natasha and Alan have gone for. Let's see if that is right for Pack. It is. It very much is right. And a hundred to go down to 12 on that. Very well done. Julie and Abby, let's see where we end up with Poisson d'Avril for April Fool's. How many of our 100 people said that? April Fool's is right. And that goes down to 29. Very well done, Natasha and Alan, back in the game. After two questions, it's well, one away. Great head-to-head, -head, isn't, isn't it? Good it? answers from both teams on both questions there. Yeah, the, the April Fish is their version of, uh, of, of April Fool's. Uh, Noel is Christmas, it's a big scorer, though. Noel would have scored you 87. You're quite right about Valentine's Day as well. That would have scored you 63, but the point would have been won by Le Carême. It is Lent. It is Lent. It yes. essentially comes from 40, 40 days. Uh, yeah. Originally 40 days, yeah. La Carême. Two points. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Here comes your third question. Best of luck to both pairs, because whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that massive jackpot of £4,000. So, our third question is all about... Four names in biopic titles. Richard. Yeah, I can show you the titles now of five biopics uh, that are just named after the first name or nickname of the, uh, the person the film is about. We just need you to tell us the surnames of these people, please. OK, let's reveal our biopic titles and here they come. We've got... Shea, 1969, Argentine Cuban revolutionary. Harriet, 2019, US abolitionist. Iris, 2001, British writer and philosopher. Jackie, 2016, US First Lady, and Judy, 2019, US singer and actress. Now then, Julian Abbey, you will go first. OK, Julian Abbey, what are you going to go for? Uh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Now then, Natasha and Alan. Uh, uh, well, I think that's probably the best one on the board. Um, but we'll go with uh, the top one, which is Guevara, as in Che Guevara. Che Guevara. So we have Tubman and Guevara. Julie and Abby have gone for Tubman. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tubman. Tubman is right. And as Alan says, I think that probably is the best on the board. Look at that, five. Very well done indeed. Five, Tubman. 
Uh, Natasha and Alan, meanwhile, have gone for Guevara. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that for Shay. Shay Guevara, absolutely right. And that goes down to 49. Very well done, and it means Julie and Abby, after three questions, you are through to the final, 2-1. Yeah, nothing you could have done there. What a great head-to-head, -head. two great teams. Um, let's fit in the rest of the scorers uh, and the rest of the answers. Iris. Murdoch. Murdoch would have scored you 21. Jackie. Kennedy. Kennedy, yep. Would have scored you 70, and Judy. Garland. Garland. She would have scored you 62. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, Natasha and Alan, second time you've been in the head-to-head. -head. It means we get the full value. We get three shows out of you, which is great. Uh, and you can come and storm through next show. We'll look forward to that very much. Thank you. Uh, Natasha and Alan, thank you very much indeed. But for Julie and Andy, it is now time for the pointless fun. Congratulations, Julie and Abby. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,000. <laughs> well, very, very well done. You've been so impressive the whole way through. We had a pointless answer from you in the first round. And I love the way you've played uh, together. Perfect teamwork there. You've taken in turns to be brilliant. Uh, so very, very well done indeed. Your second last task is to choose the category for this round. Is there anything you particularly like to see come up? Well, we've been so lucky so far. Those questions that we've yeah. had really have been ones that we can answer, and there's been no golf or football <laughs> or sport in general. It would be so ideal if that didn't come up. Musicals um, are quite good. Musicals are great. Yeah. Films um, are great. Literature. OK, yeah. well, let's see what today's list looks like. We've got... Classic US soul music, 1980s female TV detectives, US presidential elections, International <laughs> sports umpires and referees. Well, oh, God. how's that? Not great, yeah. but what do... Unless you know 1980s female TV detectives, we might have to go with US presidential elections. Should we just go with that? Yeah. We know some. You know about Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go for US presidential elections. OK, US presidential elections okay. it is. Very best of luck. We're looking for any of the following three things, please. We are looking for the year in which any US presidential election took place. We are looking for anyone who's been a Republican presidential candidate. Uh, or we're looking for anyone who's been a Democrat presidential candidate, please. Uh, so the years, uh, any Republican candidate or any Democratic candidate. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot, £4,000, is for just one of your answers to be pointless. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Yep. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think 1970, because I definitely saw somebody starting in 1971. OK, so yes, I, I know you were looking at years. Uh, um, OK, 1970, do you know any candidates? I, I other don't. than the obvious ones, like... Um, 1828, 1856, I I mean, actual presidents were also candidates, right? Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I only know the ones from Hamilton. Uh, They're too early. Oh, my God, they are. Yes. Oh, my God. OK, I don't know any. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do years, so 1970. 1970. Um, when did that guy who's around for age? Yeah. Uh, 32. 45. 10 seconds out. 33 to 45. 44 and 32. Yeah. 1944. 40, 32, 90. Okay. Okay, that is your minute up. Uh, let's have your three answers. Okay. Um, could we go with 1932? 1932. 1944. 1944. And 1970. And 1970. Um, which of those three answers is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? 32? Yes. 32 will put last. Least likely to be pointless? 70. 70. 70. And then 1944 goes in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got... 1970, 1944 and 1932. Well, very, very best of luck. I mean, who knows? Who knows if any of these will turn out to be correct or pointless. Let's hope all of them will be 
both of those. <laughs> but if you were to win that jackpot of £4,000, what would you like to do with it? We like going on city breaks to, as a family, the four of us. And we also big Hamilton fans, so it would be going to New York to see New York Hamilton. Or any other Broadway shows. And some Lots, other Broadway shows as well. If we win. <laughs> there you are. Well, let us find out. That seems like a fitting thing to be doing, doesn't it? Uh, with the uh, winnings from this round. 1970 was your first answer. We're looking for presidential election years in the US for £4,000. Let's see if 1970 is a pointless answer. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> An incorrect answer. Let's not dwell on that. Let's move on to your next answer, which is 1944. Let's see how many of our 100 people said this for £4,000. Is it pointless? It's right. <laughs> okay. Your first answer, 1970, was incorrect. 1944 is absolutely right. Down we go with 1944 down through the single figure, still going down to one. Oh, okay. That's good, though. It's a great answer. <laughs> Annoyingly, we only accept pointless answers, so we have to turn to your third and final answer, which is 1932 for £4,000. Is this a pointless year for a presidential election? Let's find out how many of our 100 people said 1932. Okay. It is right. Well, your first answer was incorrect, 1970. 1944 scored one. 1932, taking us down through the single figure, still going down. You've done it! Yeah! You have yeah! 15. Yeah! Congratulations, 1932 is a pointless answer, which means you are taking home today's jackpot of £4,000. Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. There's a simple cheat in that question, which is they gave you two years of presidential elections, 1828 and 1856. You just had to add four or take away four from any of them, and every single presidential election before um, 1932, apart from 1800, every single one was pointless. All of them. So you could have uh, added four to 1828. You've got 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, 52. Take four away, uh, 1824, 1820, 1816, 1812. There, everything was pointless, the whole, the whole lot. Uh, let's take a look, shall we, at uh, some of these pointless answers we'll start with those years there's just some dates let's go on to uh, <laughs> let's go on to Republican presidential candidates loads of good pointless answers here Goldwater Herbert Hoover Dewey Grant you could have had Calvin Coolidge James Garfield Rutherford Hayes uh, Warren G Harding Taft McKinley loads on those are pointless answers there and for the Democrats you could have had uh, Stevenson, Andrew Jackson, Truman, Walter Mondale, quite a recent one there, Franklin Pierce, um, McGiven Grover, Cleveland as a pointless answer. Um, loads on those are pointless answers uh, there as well. Woodrow Wilson also a pointless answer. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Julian Abbey, who take away today's jackpot of £4,000. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>